Let me turn on the recording. This is Design 300. Uh, what day is today? Today is October 20th, and we're starting uh, sort of a new set of stuff. So I've got the recording on. We're going to talk about some things of the... Um, of our new sect here of what we're going to do. So it's a little bit different now. You'll see that we're doing uh, material research. So up until now, we've been going over the construction process. And I've just been handing you information, suggesting that you go look up some more. You look things up and you read some specs. Now it's going to be up to you to do the material research. I've given you three videos that explain pretty closely what I'm looking for. How to start the research process. Uh, an example of the executive summary. That's often the hardest part for people. So I did that one. And what I expect of you as you edit your work. Um... And I'll tell you, <laughs> some people go, ah, I do my best work under pressure at the last minute. No, uh, it's only your best work because you never do other work. It's crummy work. Last minute work that's rushed is crummy work. And I learned that from my bosses. I learned it from my teachers in school. But mostly I learned it from uh, my engineering supervisors. You go over it and over it and over it until every detail is right. There are no mistakes left. It's clear. It's concise. Every sentence means exactly what you want it to mean. Unless you're in marketing and then you want it to mean what you don't want it to mean. Uh, that's the trick of marketing is saying and writing things that can be... Um, uh, looked at in many different ways. So you can never be accused of lying. Oh, that's not what I meant. That's not what engineers do or planners or contract uh, construction contract developers. Everything you write now in this researching needs to mean exactly what you want it to mean. And so um, we'll talk about our first one, which is concrete. Uh, you're going to have two weeks. There's three pages to do okay 6.1 6.2 and 6.3 they're all uh, a different topic or part of concrete that you're going to research and write about uh, you should research various sources of information let me see if i can make this bigger so that it looks a little bit better on the screen as we record Okay, so you're going to have two weeks. Your, your job is to research various sources of information. So as I learned about research, I found and I, I demonstrated to myself that you read about four to six times as much as what you're going to actually put in. Okay, if you just go, concrete, what's it made out of? and you look it up and you find your first Wikipedia, that's not deep. It's not real learning. It leaves a lot of stuff out. And you don't become knowledgeable or well-read on the subject. And as this class is meant to make you knowledgeable and well-read or know how to become knowledgeable and well-read. So as you look at, as if I were to ask you, what is concrete made out of? I would expect you to find three or four or five sources, not read them in their entirety because your source may have one small segment, but find the knowledge presented in that source from each one. Let it rattle around in your brain. Let it um, sit there for a while. I've got a sign over in my office that says, steep the tea to get the flavor. When you steep the tea, you let the tea bag sit for a while. So instead of like cold pressing it and hard pressing it and getting it, now let that tea just gently soak in and infuse the water to get the real flavor. 
you want to do that with your research. So be well read, read a lot, and then write a lot of notes. Write down the important parts that, or the unimportant parts. And then go read them again, let them sit around, read them again, let them sit around. So two weeks is actually not very long. You're going to want to do all of your reading, probably for 6.1, 6.2, and 6.3. Make sure you've got it all read this week and annotated. Uh, those of you who have been taking the, the RAD class, know about annotating, know about taking notes, know about uh, knowing how to go back and take the notes. And my little videos give you a very brief understanding of it. Okay, and I expect you to look at those on your own. I'm not just going to play those videos during the lecture. That's for you to watch. Each one is about 10 to 15 minutes and and to get. So Research various sources of information and make a general report. Now, look, your report is not going to be earth shattering or new or bring up some point nobody has ever made before. It's going to demonstrate that you can find the essence of the material, uh, the essence of what's going on with it and the essence of of what's important and then you can present that you can distill it and present it now here's a word that many of you may not have ever seen syncretic anybody know what syncretic means and you can google it really quick if you don't so this is the type of thing like when you're reading and you don't know what something means you jot it down and then you go do a quick lookup. Essentially, it means that you take information from many sources and you put it together into a new thing. Okay, so you're going to synchronize all of this information you've got into a format that I'm going to tell you about, but the work will really need to be your own, totally your own. Okay, I shouldn't see anybody. I may, I may recognize that you've all taken one bit of information from the first thing that comes up on Google because that's the most important. But you're all going to put it together in your own way and, um, and write your own words about it. Okay, so uh, that means you, work, you look deeply at it. So... So you're going to learn, hopefully, much more than the basic simple things that I've bullet pointed. By reading six or seven um, articles or product sheets or watching five or six YouTubes on it, you should get a much deeper understanding than just taking one quick shot and writing it down. Okay? So find out a lot more than the minimum requirement statements of fact and tie your knowledge together in a meaningful way. That's what syncretic means. Okay? And so I'm saying this says you may expect to read two to three articles or information sources that are not used for every one that you do use. Okay? Because you might find one that just basically gives you the same information about what you're talking about, but has a whole bunch of other information. And this is just part of um, becoming knowledge. Oh, thank you, Kate. Um, I, I got four things and I unmuted three of them. Darn it. Okay. So, uh, fortunately, I'm just talking about this stuff that you've been seeing on the screen. Um, but you're going to, you, you really do want to get more out of this than the few things that I've asked you about. Then I also want to make sure that you understand that when I say you should have two or three paragraphs or four or five paragraphs on your sheet, that I mean a specific thing by a paragraph. 
And the paragraph has a lead statement. Now, that doesn't have to be the first statement or the first sentence, but it's a lead statement. And then there is some evidence that supports your statement. Okay? So if you're talking about material research and you just took good old concrete and you're going to answer the questions about concrete, you might say something like, concrete is the number one most voluminous building material in the world and so its importance in design is paramount. So you've got a few things in there that you just said and you would have to back them all up with some information. Okay? And you could look at 220 billion metric tons used per year. You could look at the number of buildings made out of concrete compared to steel or wood or bamboo or brick or masonry. So you would start looking things up that would support that statement. Okay? And then you would say that, that you know, you would, some things, you know, uh, are sort of obvious. If it's the number one, yeah, we need to know about it. Okay? And usually a, uh, a paragraph will have three to five complete, well-formed sentences and will be in one verb tense. So although you could use a bullet point structure on this report, each bullet point is going to be supported by a real paragraph. I'm telling you, I learned from my bosses, good writing is the way you get your project approved. <laughs> and it's so key and so important. So here you are in your very introductory class for design technology, and, I, and we're going to make you write. Okay, now, fortunately, you don't have a million-dollar contract, you know, uh, being bound up with what you write. You get to make mistakes. You get to do it in a way that I can comment and I can help you make it better. Um, but complete, well-formed sentences and one verb tense. So usually in uh, a report type thing, uh, an entire paragraph will be present tense, I am, it is, um, uh, you see, versus past tense, I was, it was, uh, when it was, or future. We will, it shall, we're gonna, things like that. And well-formed sentences, now, you know, this is really hard because I I took my English classes when I was in high school and I learned more English grammar from my French class than I think I learned from my English class. And maybe it's just because there was this thing about English class. Ugh. And we had to, but I did. I learned how to underline the nouns Actually, where I learned about it most was a game called Mad Libs. Anybody play Mad Libs? Is that still around? I flippin' loved Mad Libs. Um, you would fill in the blank and it would say, put a noun here and you would make up a noun and you would read, yeah, Eric, yeah, he likes it. And, and, and it was just a fun game. So I learned a lot from that. A well-formed sentence has a subject and a verb and usually there are some nouns and some adjectives so a very the most simple sentences are very short and there's a subject and a verb and then usually something that describes the effect of the verb something like that so three or four or five or six or seven words and it's one basic idea, okay? In a report like this, you would like to um, 
vary it up a little bit. So it was, it was, it was, it was, or concrete is, concrete is, concrete is, concrete is. Oh my gosh, it gets tiresome to write. So you will use things like it or then this or but, but, but if it's a series of things. And if there's two ideas or a string of ideas, you separate them with commas. So this is a writing thing. Um, if you're not the most accomplished writer in the world, I'm an engineer. I'm a horrible writer, but I've, I've learned through experience to write well and, and, um, I use, I use Google, um, Google helpers all the time. I use a Google doc or a word doc and it helps me write it in something that helps you get it right. Have other people read it. And then when you're looking at it, put it aside and read it again and do your best to read it wrong. Okay. If you use the word it, look and see if it can refer to two or three different things in your sentence. Okay. So if it can refer to two or three different things, you are not clear. Somebody could misinterpret what you wrote. So you want to go back and review it and make sure that you're super clear and concise. Um, and you can only be read one way. Now, there's only so far you can take that. Oh, my gosh, it gets very stultifying. But do the best you can. This is why it's important to actually turn in your work during uh, this weekend so that I can review it. It'll be excellent amount of feedback. I really take some time and I look this over for you if I can. Okay, so let's take a look and see what you're supposed to do first. You're going to do a description of the product or the process. Now, if you look in the on Canvas, you can just use the product, regular old concrete, or the product, rebar, or the process, pre-stressed rebar, post-stressed rebar, or you can look at poured in place, process of concrete, or tilt up. So you get to pick. There's six or seven things to pick from. And you'll notice in my little video, I picked a specialty process, which was air entrained concrete. Because I haven't done that before and I wanted to learn about it. And I started learning a lot. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, Eric, your landscape, your landscape, is that what you are, Eric? Eric says, uh, um, yep. Um, that um, uh, he's going to look at pervious concrete. Pervious means water will go through it. And so that would be a big deal for a landscaper because we're always worried about where water goes and how to get rid of it if I concrete over something and stormwater pollution prevention plans. And pervious concrete is one way that you can do things. Okay, so that would be a great product, although it could also be considered processed. So that's why it does, you know, you'll just say pervious concrete. Okay, and so you're going to make a summary of the product. That lets somebody, just like what I just said. Okay, it would explain to somebody who has no clue, first of all, what pervious means, why you would want to use it and things like that. Okay, now your first paragraph might include these two things. Okay, or if it's a if it's something that's a little bit more uncommon like pervious, this might be one paragraph and where, how, and why it's used might be another paragraph. And for those of you who have done uh 
a significant amount of writing, you know that there are tying sentences or transition sentences that help you move from one to the other. Now, you don't necessarily need that here because it's a report, but they can be helpful. Okay, so, but that's a paragraph and a paragraph or one long paragraph. Provide at least three examples of the use. Okay, so that's an important thing. If you can only find one example, it's probably not that important or interesting of a project, product for us. Now remember, these are for construction. So concrete is often used for uh, interior design, countertops, basins, um, cabinetry, believe it or not, and cool things, statues, that's, this is a construction thing. So it's something that is in the constructed environment. It's a floor. It's a wall. It's a driveway. It's a pathway. It, um, it's, um, uh, those are the main things, right? It's part of a roof. It's, oh, I'll tell you, concrete roof tiles are, are super important building material. So you might use concrete roof tiles. So all of the systems that we've gone through are important. Yep, solid keeps the home nice. And of course, it's, it's one of the better fire safe products. Um, it's long lasting. It's got some interesting thermal properties. Sometimes they can be good for one area and not others. So then you also want benefits of use. Now you're welcome to reorganize these. As you talk about the three examples, each example might have benefits and drawbacks in it. I'm not telling you you have to go in this little order and write a paragraph on each one of these. However, I will be looking to ensure that you have provided information about all of these okay and then you should be able to provide some master format specs or read the specs and provide some interesting information out of them right are there conditions for use are there performance requirements do they meet certain standards uh, is there a wide range of these products available? Right, so um, you can use the master format specs as research material, or you can identify a number of uh, providers and their master format specs as a resource. All right, so this is this is just six point one, which is description of the product or process so how might you how might you put this together I've done three options for you to look at and you could do it other ways too but if you've never done one of these or you know this this type of report is not something that they assign in school very often in high school and it's way different than what you'll get in an anthropology class or a sociology class. And so I feel the need to give you some input so that you're not um, struggling to make this um, the type of research, scholarly research paper that you might do in a general ed class. This is a research report on a material that you might give to a supervisor or a colleague so that they can have some information to be knowledgeable about using this product in your design, okay, or using this material. So the first general structure that you might have 
would be um, abstract and executive summary. And I talk about that in the video of what that is, but it's, um, it's sort of the whole kit and caboodle in one place without the evidence or the backup material. It's sort of like the lead statement, um, uh, a very quick um, piece of information about the structure of your entire report, and then some um, support for your lead statement. And then maybe your second paragraph would put 1.1 and 1.11 and, sorry, 6.1.1 and 6.1.2 together. Third paragraph might be 6.3 and 6.4. And the fourth paragraph might be about this. So that's one way to put it together. And you can see that'll take up a page. And there's likely to be some images with it. Okay, another way would be create a separate paragraph for each bullet. And that's what I demonstrated in uh, two of my videos. But you can use the bullet point to start your paragraph. That becomes your lead sentence or some version of it. Okay? And then the third option you might do is leave those bullet points in there for a heading. If you're reading a report, often you want to be able to skim the headings very quickly to get right to the piece of information that you want. So leaving the bullet points in there as the headings and then um, and maybe revising them a little bit and then using them to um, put little paragraphs under each one is another good way to do it. Okay. So so let me look and see. I've got um, I've got a jam board up here for you to be able to see. It's part of one of my videos. Let me see if I can find it. I thought I had a jam board up here. And maybe I didn't put a a jam board on. Or maybe I didn't save it. Looks like I didn't save a Jamboard for this one. So let's go ahead and just find the template or my version of it and look at that really quickly. So you'll notice we're skipping section five. How many of you have watched my video already? I asked you to do that. I don't know if any of you have. It makes the explanation easier for sure. Okay, so our um, so Eric, what did you find it helpful at all to to what I'm cluing in on? Okay, cool. Um, so there's one person that says it's useful. So you'll see the report unit six is the report and the first page is a description of the product or process 6.2 is material sourcing where does it come from how is it made how do you get it and number three are what we call eco material characteristics what about this material can we talk about with respect to the environment Okay, and so it's broken down into those three things. So here's an example of my number 1.1 and 1.2, and you'll see I made a bunch of notes over here. I just started looking at things and started cutting and pasting and writing them down. <laughs> okay, so I made a bunch of notes as I started going to different websites. And I made some more notes over here. And I didn't use everything that I, that I found. Some of it will probably get used somewhere else. 
Okay, but then I wanted to write about air and train gas. So I started out with things that I had found. This is sort of my 6.1. Let's take a look. I went by sort of, sort of went by this one. But it's sort of an executive summary. So this is my general information about it. Okay. And and it's really the stuff you see in yellow is from my notes what I thought was important to talk about in just that very dis basic description. So now I've got the green this I got a whole bunch more to do and I took up a lot of room with this but I think that these ones are going to be a little bit smaller and shorter okay and I've got an image oh and look I can go find that image and my notes over here I'll get rid of those eventually or I won't print them but I, I write notes all over this as I'm going. And eventually I'll cut and paste those and put them somewhere else. But I don't know about you guys, but I do better if my notes are where I need to write. I just do better than hopping back and forth. So all the stuff you see in yellow, I put here. And as you'll see, at first I just kind of like cut and pasted them in there and kind of played around with some transition words. And, and then I went back and I redid it and I redid it. And the formatting that I chose is to have even sides. So I chose this formatting right here with the even margins. Because I think it'll just look better. Be Look better. Okay, so... So that's your job, okay? And you hopefully will have a chance to look for something that goes along with, with your desired process. So those of you who are in uh, considering construction management, I would look at either port in place process where they basically form the walls, make forms out of plywood and tie them together with with bolts basically ties and then pour the concrete let it set for a little while pull the forms off start working on the next layer or tilt up because those are really cool processes that are construction process um, uh, construction management intensive Pouring a foundation uh, doesn't really require as much project planning. It requires some, but it's not as impressive as project planning or understanding the process of poured in place or tilt up. Okay. Um, so you can look at those and they are definitely used in different types of structures. They have their drawbacks. So th those of you who are interested in construction management, I can suggest that. You can also look at pre-stressed or post-stressed rebar uh, because those, again, have their own cool processes that have a lot of planning and they have spots for inspections and this and that and the other thing. Uh, if you're into landscape, things like pervious, uh, just good old rebar, or special additives. Special additives are really important for landscaping. You've got color additives, freeze additives, and you're going to see that this entrained air concrete has a lot of benefits because 
Um, it's, um, I think I put it in here. Ah, it's about freezing and thawing. So when we talk about the benefits of the use and the three examples, and trained air is really, really, really good because the little water um, molecules and droplets can get into these little pores and expand without, without propagating a crack. So... Uh, and it's tough enough for walkways and driveways. It's a little expensive. People don't like to do it, but it's really, really good if you need that. So so landscapes, you can do that. And if you're into design technology, just learning about drawing and doing things and how do things work, um, I would say look at the process of, say, tilt-up design, um, because that's so commonly used in our area and there's a lot of detailed drawings that are required with tilt-up design and you can, you can, um, um, look back to this when we get into those areas of actually learning how to draw and do things. Okay. So there's some information on, on this. If we look at the calendar, for Sunday, which should be the 25th, you'll see that it's a portfolio pre-check. And I've got all three. You should try to write something, if you can, on all three. That makes this week heavy duty. Um, but the more you can get in on it, the better. And the big reason for doing it is even if you write kind of clunky stuff that's not really formatted or well put together, your ideas can be down and in place. So this will require you to do some research. I would expect each one of these pages to take you two or three hours of research. Now that might be a little bit more than you're expecting because it's more than what we've done so far. But if you recall, you're expected to do two to three hours of work outside of class. And this one hour is one hour of class. So you should have at least three hours of research just based on this class period. So you could get at least an hour on each sheet and at least an hour. So you should be able to get four to six hours of work in uh, strong suggestion, getting it in now if you can. And part of that is just going to be looking around and going, well, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Okay, unless you already have something in your mind. Every topic has interest. Okay, so long as it's concrete. So let me take questions on that before I tell you about the other thing you can do. Okay. Oh yeah, Lee, here we go. Here's my <laughs> here's all my information about it. So any any questions about how to go about doing this, what it is, where to find it? Note we're skipping right to section six. So unit five, you're just gonna put uh not assigned this semester and leave it blank. You leave it in there so that the sheet is in there. Yeah, so Eric is saying he started on Wiki to see what's interesting. You know, too many too many professors don't like it, okay? Uh, I love Wikipedia, and there's tons of other wikis, and they actually can lead you to scholarly research. If you don't even know what question to ask or what to be interested in, Wikipedia is awesome. So uh, you're welcome, welcome, welcome to touch bases on Wikipedia and follow it along 
and look at cool stuff. So those of you who are in landscape, you might also look at luminous concrete where they actually embed um, uh, fiber into it that's luminous that, that you can put um, light on one side and see another through another. It's kind of kind of a cool way of doing it. There's also a material that you can mix on your coating, the top layer. So you put down your concrete and then you put down this eighth inch or quarter inch layer of some sort of material that it's like radiant and it soaks up the sun and then it makes your walkway luminous and walls luminous. So there's some interesting things that you can do um, with with that you can also talk about additives and uh, pervious um, things like that okay all right then I want to talk about the next one which is your alternate there is an alternate thing that we can do here instead of doing research on a process you can actually practice what we did in units one, two, three, and four. You can practice grubbing a site and grading a site and excavating a site and putting down your uh, dirt and then gravel and then sand and then pouring a layer of concrete and then laying out your walls and putting in doors and windows, and then even putting on a roof. And we do that in Minecraft, Minecraft Educational. And it's really cool. So I did this this summer with a bunch of sixth through ninth graders, and it was flipping amazing. What they were able, they actually made a nuclear reactor. And. <laughs> And uh, this very, very cool centrifuge. And I mean, it was amazing what they were able to do in Minecraft. Now, ours is going to be much more simple unless you really know Minecraft. And if you're a Minecraft pro and do not want to work in educational and want to work in your own environment, you are welcome to do so. All right? Uh, especially if you... Uh, are familiar with what they call redstone, which is their way of being able to do electronic circuits and make um, make things actually work. Doors open, doors close, pistons operate, motors go. You can actually do all that in Minecraft. Ours is going to be more simple, though. You're literally going to build. You're going to take a site. You're going to do the site work. You're going to do the foundation and flooring. You're going to do the walls, windows, and doors. And you're going to do the roof. And you're going to take six weeks to do that. You're going to do, instead of unit six, seven, and eight, you're going to do these. But you're going to do it in a fashion where somebody understands that you have actually just done what's called a building simulation. We're just using Minecraft to do it. Now, you ask why we use Minecraft. So we started using this about a year and a half ago when our chemist, our chemist that was working on SARS came to us and said, all right, I've got the molecule that I want to do now, um, but we need to, to convert it with this thing called FME to put it into a point cloud because then we can go to the NSA site and we can I can talk about it with anybody who I can import it to the site and then uh, chemists from all over the world can come and we can talk about it. We can do experiments on it. And you know what that site was? It was flipping Minecraft. Our National Science Academy uses Minecraft and point cloud generators to go into Minecraft so they can meet all at the same time and do this work. And it blew my lid off. 
Um, and so then I started experimenting with it. We actually can take an AutoCAD or Revit drawing and import it to Minecraft and have a beautiful 3D image. You can Google Minecraft shaders and you'll see architects doing their mass modeling in Minecraft and showing absolutely beautiful interior design and architecture. But from the mass modeling in Minecraft, they very quickly get um, um, the, the basic shape of the building and the mass of the building and the energy of the building. It's just incredible. So now ours is going to be pretty low level. And our first part of this is going to be talking about the Minecraft educational environment and how you get into it and how you operate in it and what its limitations and drawbacks and benefits are and just get used to doing it. Okay. Now, I did, number one, uh, grade the site. Oh, and by the way, you have to do it according to a plan. So once you're on board and you know how to operate, I will give you the drawing for the place in Minecraft and you have to actually build it right. Oh my gosh. And so some of you might want to be Minecraft inspectors for each other too. It's not too hard. And we have tools for you. We actually had one of... Uh, our programmers make a Minecraft surveying program for us so that we can very quickly, as a team, survey a site to see if you got it right. So this is probably um, the most technical simulation that you'll find probably anywhere in a... Uh, a community college, a state college, and um, a UC below graduate student level. So you'll actually be doing right below graduate student level work if you decide to do this. If you're going to be one of the people that wants to transfer, I'm going to strongly suggest that you get into the simulation environment. And then we can give you more simulation environments as we go. But this is our most simple one. The other thing is if you want to work as a team, that's the beauty of Minecraft. It's already set up as, as a team site. If you have one, two, or three people on a team, a team of one, so if you want to work with somebody else, um, and do this together. You have to do your own portfolio, but the actual work in Minecraft can be done together. You let me know, and I will set you up a team world, unless you know how to do that already. Um, I will set up a world for your team to work in where you can go in individually or work in there at the same time. You can communicate with each other. Discord is the best way to communicate while you're in Minecraft, but you can do it directly from Minecraft. Um, so that's the cool other thing that you can do, right? And uh, I think I even put, did I put a presentation together on that one for you? I'll, I'll do that for you, uh, but it's really kind of fun and it's really kind of cool. Let me see, I'm looking for this. Sorry, I need to get to my modules. And you'll see that there's a new module at the bottom of assigned. A1 is your alternate option. Here's the general thing about it. You'll do site work, foundation, and you'll have a section on documentation. You can get to it. Here's how to get started. 
little get started video that you can see and then in your in your portfolio okay you're going to you're going to document what you need to do okay you're going to document sort of a a process sheet on the environment and how to get started so let's see what i say down here Oh, I don't have it in mine. It's in the um, template. So what you're going to do is you're going to describe the simulation environment. That's key for anybody who's going to look at your simulation documentation. They have to know what it is. Describe the platform that is an executive summary. How the platform, describe the platform, the advantages or disadvantages, and how, uh, how it's used for other educational uses. So you're going to describe the Minecraft educational uh, learning platform, simulation platform, how to get to it, and how to operate in it. Okay, and so that's sort of your starting point. That's this week and next week. I expect you to get good and really understand your environment and start working within it and practicing and finding out what you can do. And I'll give you more information on how you do things like, how do you, uh, when I talk about how do you operate within the environment, you have to know how to geolocate yourself how to how to move, how to excavate, but the big one is how to know exactly where you are and where you're operating. Because of course that's key to, to working with any drawing. Okay? Any questions on that? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop.